hey what's up guys today in this video i'm going to talk about the concept of dependency injection in laravel laravel allows us to inject different dependencies which we may have in our service class or our controllers and as a developer i think it is very important that you understand what dependency injection is and how it is beneficial for you in your development to demonstrate to demonstrate the concepts i have a clean installation of laravel okay i have no code in here whatsoever and <clears throat> we will start with some basic examples at first so let's say we want to create a sam sample route i'll go to web.php and i will try to create a new con uh, route for that but i would also need a controller to manage that route so first let's create a controller so we have a controller in place let's create the route which we wanted so our definition is ready we are telling laravel we have a route called sample when the request is coming to this particular route call this controller this controller will have only one function and this function is going to get called when the request is coming to this particular controller so now let's return something and see whether it works or not obviously it is going to work because it's very straightforward we have done nothing too fancy and we have our page the hard-coded json is being returned nothing too difficult but then let's go back to our code and can you see this thing use illuminate http request this is the request class of laravel which internally implements the symphony request it has many you know methods available and i would strongly recommend that you know if you, when you have time do go through this particular you know class because you will understand what all things you can execute on your request object okay but then we are not right now going through the request class we are looking at dependency injection so we have this what can we do with it i'll show you something this is one of the most common way of injecting a dependency what i basically did is i'm telling laravel that this particular function has a dependency of the request object so when this method has been executed the request object is required so whenever inside this method block we have any reference to request we know that laravel has already created that instance for us so how do we test that so if you are aware of it i mean we can obviously get the input from the request object now which means what i can basically something like this right so we were able to get the entire request object inside this function doing this okay and this is definitely a very powerful thing but then you may ask a question why do i need to do this why can't i new up an instance well the problem is one class can be dependent on some other class which can be dependent on some other class as well now which will mean so let's say you know, we do dollar class one equals new class one which depends on class two so we will have to do new class two okay and pass this as an argument to the constructor something like this right it's a very uh, you know high level example but but as you can see now if class two is dependent on something else do you want do you anticipate or do you foresee how much code you have to write just to get the instance of class one but it is quite possible that you actually need those instances for some you know um, 
some behavior which you want so what laravel tells us is that you know you don't new up classes like this you just inject the dependencies and if executed properly we will be getting everything as and when required okay so that's that is basically the crux of the thing so request because it can new up a lot of things we don't need to worry Lalevel's service container is going to handle that now there's one more may one more way sorry to inject the dependency one is obviously that you know we are sending a parameter and Laravel understands this and it news up the request object but let's just say inside a controller you have something required in almost every method for example you have a user controller in that you have certain methods and all of them are somehow um, you know, accessing the user service you know, it's a very common pattern so let's just say um, how do how do you do this let's just say we change it to index first okay index is a function so I'll have to do something like this okay sample controller has this method now let's have one more private function private function let's call it uh, check one okay and there is one more check two okay and then let me create services slash sample service dot php this is one class service class so the service has a very basic function we are not doing anything too fancy just for our understanding we are logging whatever string is coming to this particular service so inside my storage logs laravel log okay i'll clean up that file and now what we will do is one method which i was trying to tell you is basically the constructor function okay i typically get a bit confused between construct and constructor in javascript i think php is construct yeah right so in this what i can do is something like this and then now this is a dependency injection on the controller uh, sorry the constructor and what that will mean is now i can do this particular function uh, sorry this property dot log inside this function and even inside the other two functions and the beauty is because this dependency injection is happening right in the constructor all of them are able to access this private uh, this private variable which is the instance of the service which we created correct i mean we could have you know passed this as a variable over here okay for example we could have do sample service dollar sample service but then do you understand that if i'm calling um, this check one from index something like this correct it will need the sample service so i'll have to pass this as an argument and stuff but then i don't i don't need to do that i mean it would have been a code like this and then i get that as an argument and this basically becomes sample service but then if i am if this particular thing is calling check two then i would have to call it from here right for example this 
check to and then sample service and then when I get the sample service I call this right so you can see what basically happened is function one is calling function uh, no, function one is being called from the main index okay function one did its thing and then it called function two and all of them are you know going through that particular function uh, uh, the parameter so if we refresh the page we got these three but then i personally feel that the simplest way is this um not this and do this and this argument is not required anymore right so both of these functions are kind of you know independent the check one is getting called i'm not passing any argument so you know the signature is quite straightforward you just call the function and you are done it is automatically doing its thing okay so this is one more thing where you know we can use the constructor so one more way of doing dependency injection okay or you can say getting an instance of a class in laravel is a nice method which i'm going to show you now so let's just say instead of doing this service i get rid of this thing Although I'm not saying this is the best possible way, but yeah, sometimes when I am not able to inject um, an anything additional into my function, right? I'll I'll give you an example. Let's just say PHP artisan make rule test rule. Okay, this is one instance which I have seen where. You know, let's say we just created a validation rule in that this is the function which laravel is automatically going to execute and in this you can't do a dependency injection correct but then when you are using this as a validation rule in the validator you need to you know pass that as a class so if if you have something in the constructor you will have to send that instance to avoid such a situation Okay, what we can do is instead of passing it through the constructor or through the argument, there is one more way of you know getting that instance, and which is completely again decoupled, and and that is the reason I like this particular method, which is app make. like this okay take that in a variable do this and now if I run my code and if you're lucky nothing should change no but it did undefined property on line 12 so let's see what happened what mistake have i made oh yes i haven't changed this so this change is made now let's see yes everything is properly working let me clear once more and show you that the logs are coming properly so a dependency injection can be done in three different ways that we saw right now through this which is in an argument in a function okay ideally it you know the arg the function should be triggered by uh, laravel for you know you to get the di into working di by that i mean dependency injection or you know getting the instance the second one was obviously the constructor method the constructor method allows you to you know get the instances and then you have to assign it to a private variable but if you are facing situations where you can't do any of them then this app make can definitely work for you so yeah that's about it guys this is 
how you can in real life use dependency injection to your own advantage i feel that it is a very important concept and as i mentioned this is a very powerful tool for you while doing development so get good hold of dependency injection if you have any questions feel free to ask me in the comment sections below if you like this video do click on the thumbs up icon and don't forget to subscribe to my channel